All right, back with another Metallica review. This time we're on to the album and Justice for All. What's up, ladies and gents in Cyberland? Coming back to you with another album review from Metallica. And Justice for All. So, when I got around to Injustice for All, something was very weird to me when I listened to it at the time. I was like, where the hell is the bass? And for the longest part, the album took a lot longer to grow on me than maybe uh, Master of Puppets. It was extremely dark. Like, the album came out even darker than what had already come up to that point. The album was more sophisticated when it came to the musicianship. But it was just, I don't know, it was just something wasn't right with it. And it took years, like, if you had asked me what I thought of the album when I first heard it, probably would have been like, it's not as good as Master of Puppets. But as years have progressed with my life, and as I sit back and, and you know, retrospect of it, um, I would definitely say the album is on par with Master of Puppets and Ride the Lightning for different reasons. One... Um, the musicianship had, was extremely just off the chart compared to what had come before it. The lyrics were darker and more bleak and less and had no hope to them. There was nothing positive about the lyrics on this album at all. It was just complete, um, complete darkness, complete um, hopelessness, definitely. Um, and I think with what happened with Cliff and, and the band trying to move forward, there was a lot of that put in the album to some degree. Not referring to Cliff, but just the, the mindset of recording it. Um, the other thing was the lack of bass on the album. And to this day... There's a bunch of drama behind it, and that, you know, it was because of this, it was because of that. I'm not going to get into all that, because at, at the end of the day, the album is what it is. It's never going to be, it's never going to sound the way the fans would like it to sound. Um, it's just one of those things where the band kind of dropped the ball with the choice that they did. And to this day, it's just something that we have to deal with. And you either are going to listen to the album or you're not. You know, it's not... Um, there's no way of getting around it. Because even when the remaster came out, it was stated that there are... There, there isn't a, a copy where the bass is prevalent in the track. Other people have said, and it's been stated, that the bass is so aligned with the guitar that all they did was turn down the bass and it's still um, it's it's so exactly like the guitar that you're not missing anything. I've heard that been thrown around too. I believe that I gave the album a ten out of ten yes sirs, because it's it's still a classic album, but I do feel that not having the bass where it should have been makes it where it, it could. Because I, I I know people that say Justice is their favorite album, and I always hear Master Pop. It's always here. It's always between those two. But Justice could have been so much more if the bass had been prevalent. Some people disagree. A lot of people would agree with me. And then the reason. The reasons why is, is, is a whole nother um, 
topic and, and debate and issue. Um, I would say this was the last time that you were going to hear Metallica play this way until Death Magnetic. Moving forward, the music was going to become shorter, less sophisticated, more just heavy metal as opposed to thrash. So um, the band, I think, as they've stated, it was realized they, they had exhausted themselves with this type of playing that it was time to change it up a little bit, which they did moving forward. And it stayed that way for a good amount of time, almost, I'd say, 20 years. Um, and then eventually it changed after that. They went back to doing thrash and heavy metal, and it's kind of been that way since. Um, the top five tracks for the album were Injustice for All, Black End, Harvester, Harvest of Sorrow. Um, I'm sorry, that's Harvester of Sorrow. I don't know why I'm missing that. Uh, one, To Live Is To Die, and um, and I also like to say, because I can only do five, I'd also say The Frayed Ends of Sanity. There wasn't anything I didn't like, it just didn't grab me as much as um, Master of Puppets for the time I listened to it. But as it's gone through my, my mind over the years, it, it is a different situation now kind of moving forward um i would say it's kind of hard to I, I couldn't say listen to this first i would just say if you've gotten the first you know if you've gotten ride lightning master puppets this would be the next one you probably want to listen to um if you've heard the black alma and you want to kind of see where the band started then you can go into this it's, it's kind of a weird album to where I would suggest what you should listen. I, will, I definitely wouldn't say listen to it first, but it's kind of hard to say where you should listen to it after you listen to some of the material already. I just say, like, at least you should have heard Ride the Lightning and Master Puppets before you get to this. I would say at least. That, that's the best way I could put it. Um, but nonetheless, it, it was it was a great album. I enjoy it, and I still listen to it. So, that being said, it's cute music. <laughs> 